And joining us for more on this year's election is Jerry Springer, who you probably know from the Jerry Springer Show. But did you also know he is the former mayor of Cincinnati, and he now hosts his own podcast, the Jerry Springer Podcast? And thank you for being here uh, today. Thanks for inviting me. And I don't know if everybody knows, but you are also a very proud Sarasota resident. For the last 20 years. Yeah, this is home. We love it here. And, uh, yeah, we just love it here. It's heaven. We're, we're going to uh, dive a lot more into your impressions of our community, but uh, let's start by talking about the, the presidential race. And it's, uh, it would be an easy question to ask you what your thoughts would be. But given the context of, of um, you know, a lot of people who watch your show, um, how do you assume it breaks down in terms of whether they support Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump? Or can well, you gen even generalize that question? Well, it's hard to generalize. I would say, since we have a relatively young audience, and I, you know, we have 250 people in the studio audience every show, um, and obviously millions watching, but I would say they're mostly Hillary backers. Um, you know, they tend to be liberal. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be looking at my show if you weren't liberal to begin with. So I don't think that's an accurate cross-section. I do think Hillary will ultimately win the election. But if it were just my viewers, yeah, she would win. You know, I, I don't know if, you know, we mentioned off the top that you're the former mayor of Cincinnati. And I, it, tell me if this is safe to say, you know, your television show and your podcast is your day job. Your passion really is politics. Yeah, and my podcast is political. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's, in other words, I make a living in show business. But what I really care about is, is, is political issues. I mean, that's in my DNA. It's in my blood. That's, that is. The best job I ever had was being mayor of Cincinnati. I've always said that. So that's what I really care about, because I don't want to sound corny, but we're immigrants. We love America. America saved our lives. You know, we, my family was, uh, much of it was exterminated during the Holocaust. So we came to America because we believed in the Statue of Liberty. If I get particularly angry now with a Trump candidacy, is on that issue more than any other, I see metaphorically speaking that he wants to replace the Statue of Liberty with a wall. In other words, America is supposed to be the place where it doesn't matter what your religion is. It doesn't matter where your parents were from, where you were born. You know, this is the one place on earth where you can get freedom despite whatever your background. And all of a sudden that's going to change. And uh, it is so un-American. I don't think we've ever, ever in American history had someone from a major party be the candidate for president who is opposed to the idea of America. I mean, we have to remember, America is beyond all else an idea. It's the only country in the history of the planet that ever was created by an idea. Every other country, every other country started out as a tribe or an ethnic group, and it expanded and became maybe a kingdom or monarchy, an empire, wanted access to the waterways so it could have trade. Every country starts like that for thousands of years. But here, came Amer here comes America, and it's an idea. So to run for president and be opposed to that idea, I think is the most un-American thing you can think of. But, you know, many Trump supporters, a lot of whom watch this broadcast, would say the idea of this campaign is about taking America back, that we, uh, we've lost so many jobs to Mexico, that uh, we are in danger of our lives because of terrorism that seems to be coming yeah. in from abroad. We're not losing jobs to America. I'm looking around this TV studio, and I don't see the cameramen. What I see are you have these robotic cameras being me People have been replaced by technology. That's what's going on in the world. That's what's going on in the planet. I mean, it is so clear throughout history when someone wants to gain political power, they always find some outside group to call the enemy. So, yes, I'm going to come to power. You know, in some era it was, we'll go after the Jews. We'll go after the blacks. Now Trump comes along and we're going after the Mexicans. We're going after the Hispanics. Always pick some other group instead of realizing that, you know, Mexico isn't killing America. You know, it's just, that's just dishonest. You know, take America back again. I, I love America, but let's remember what America is. Don't on the one hand say you want to make America what it's used to be, and then you don't even understand what America is. That's unforgivable. You know, I, I was once asked what do I think is the biggest danger to our country? And you think about terrorism, uh, you could think about a lot of things. And, and I said, the, the, in my opinion, the greatest danger to the United States is the nature of our politics. So you have 
uh, you know, one side, the Trump side, uh, casting whatever aspersions against uh, the Clinton campaign. And then you have a lot of Democrats who look at Trump and Trump supporters, and they really do call them deplorables. Well, I don't think, let me clearly state, I don't think people that support Trump are, de uh, you know, are as human beings deplorable. I think, though, you can be a good person, but s still do things that are deplorable. You could be a relatively good person, and you know, on one day you you hit someone or you steal something. That's deplorable. The act that you did. Well, the act of supporting someone who outwardly is, seems bigoted and racist and says all these horrible things. Well, it is deplorable to support something like that. That doesn't mean you as a human being are deplorable. But it, it is deplorable to do that. And you can't, it's false equivalence. You could be angry at Hillary because, oh, she used the wrong server. Oh, she, her voice is too high. She's too wrinkled. She got tired. She made, you know, and compare that to the Trump record. It's just not, it's why all the Republican recent presidents, right. the Republican leadership, they're not supporting Trump. Let's just take a quick break right now, and we'll sure. be back with Jerry Springer. More to come.